Mr. Happy Living here, and I'm happy to be broadcasting from WITV7 in the beautiful Queen City of Charlotte, North Carolina, USA. Hey friends, take this moment to imagine how you'd feel living the life you were put on this planet to live, doing work you love with people you love, in places you love, all the while creating something of real value to others. It's what I call a life of significance. And I can tell you, it's a very happy life. And so can my new friend, Upemi Okan. She's my guest star, and she's come here today to inspire you. Hey, Upemi, I'm so happy to welcome you to the Something Significant Show. Greetings. Uh, thank you so much. I am pleased and grateful to be on the show. Wonderful. And I look, forward, I look forward to spreading significant things. Awesome. Well, you just take a minute and tell, your, tell our fabulous audience what you're doing these days to make your mark of significance on the world. Thank you, Matt. Uh, I'm doing uh, many significant things to make remarkable to leave remarkable marks in the world and uh, they include but not limited to peace um, i'm doing a lot to foster peace because we need a peaceful environment to thrive to thrive and a peaceful society makes development possible so one of the many things i'm doing is um, organizing a fora for peace, for spreading peace. Uh, I have done what I have organized, uh, the Peace Agenda Summit, which brought together uh, 17 presenters, presenting strategies for, for achieving personal and global peace. Uh, so the Peace Agenda Summit is one of such significant things that I'm doing. And I'm also planning a, a global concert to, to promote peace through music. So peace is one of the significant things that I'm doing to leave significant marks, not just on humans, but also the environment, because we cannot thrive if our environment is unsafe and if our, our, our environment is unhealthy. So peace building, conflict, peaceful conflict resolution, spreading these messages of peace, helping people to discover their, their God-given talent, not just discovering it, but to use those talents as gifts to the world. So these are some of the things I'm doing and I'm also planning to, uh, to start a, a broadcast where I would share with people how to resolve conflicts peacefully because we all encounter conflicts, personal conflicts, family conflicts, communal conflicts, global conflicts, national conflicts in all, all forms, but conflicts can provide us opportunities for growth and these conflicts do not need to be violent so that's one of the things that are significant things that i am doing to help people to resolve or to tell people or to show people how we can resolve our conflicts peacefully i love it i love it okay. i mean now <laughs> let's let our friends get to in our community get to know you a little bit not what you do but who you are through the mathematical equation of our happy formula it's a simple one but it's really powerful capacity plus purpose equals happy. <laughs> Excuse me, so let's start with capacity. What are your practices for building your personal capacity, physical, mental, spiritual, financial, emotional? In other words, what do you do on a regular basis to create all the capacity you need to take really good care of yourself and your loved ones and still have plenty left over to be a giver to others? That's a good question. So habitually, I, I, I exude, I exude a peace. I love to exude peace because mentally, if you're as a peaceful person, I'm able to uh, spread the peace that I, I speak about. And when there is peace, when a place is peaceful, just like I mentioned earlier that a peaceful society makes development possible. So starting from me as an individual and the people and my immediate environment, every day, indeed, I recognize that we have challenges. But how can I also experience these challenges? But the way I am able to harness my strengths every day is to wake up being grateful, 
gratefulness is one of one of those uh, my my strengths uh, my capacity strengths thankful for the day thankful for being alive thankful for the people around me thankful for the air i breathe for the liquids i drink everything around me for the trees i'm so happy mm -hmm. to see everything around me so gratefulness peacefulness trying to be at peace and so when I encounter difficulties, when I encounter anxieties, when I encounter situations uh, or, or when I encounter uh, circumstances that, are, that might, might be unsettling, within me, I develop that self-strength to, to tackle or to handle all the situations that I encounter every day from a, an angle of peace. So if I'm in a place and where there's chaos, rather than reacting uh, to re uh, reacting in a chaotic way, I now react in a peaceful way, and that way, anyone seeing me with that reaction would now learn that we can, we can, we can, we can surmount these challenges peacefully. So every day, for mentally, I try to imbibe a peaceful culture, the culture of peace, not just imbibing it but practicing it, and I also try to eat well to eat right because when you're talking about health it has to be wholesome i believe it has to be wholesome we're talking about mental health we're talking about physical health even spiritual health and the other forms of health so i also try to feed my body you know well so that i can handle all the tasks i have for the day so eating well drinking well making sure that uh, whatever i feed my body is healthy so these are some of the ways that i go about my my daily tasks and my daily responsibilities in such a way that i do it significantly and to affect the people around me positively yeah so folks i hope you were listening Upeme talked about 70 percent of her answer was from that split, that space of spiritual energy that is infinite. The more peace she spreads, she still she doesn't lose any peace. She doesn't have to replenish the peace. It just creates more. And so, how does she create capacity? Seventy percent was spiritual energy that is infinite. And then she finally got around to, yeah, well, I have to eat well and I have to do this stuff too. But those are earthly energies that are finite and they need to be replenished all the time. So the more you can build your life and the energy you need, the capacity you need from spiritual infinite energy, then you're going to look like this lady with that great big smile on your face all the time. So before moving on to purpose, let's discuss my very favorite capacity building concept. It's called Kaizen. It's the Japanese idea that small incremental improvements add up over time to yield great big results. And it means there's always something you can be doing better tomorrow than you did today. And I love it because it always keeps me moving forward in some way every single day. So, Pepe, how do you Kaizen your personal capacity to continuously become more so you can continuously give more? Uh, thank you. Uh, how I do that, the Kaizen way, is to realize that there is room for self-improvement. So mm -hmm. every day I ask myself, how can I, how can I improve in whatever I, I did on, on a particular day? And th that, give, that strengthens me because when I do that, that introspection, looking within and realizing what my strengths were on a particular day, what my weaknesses were on a particular day, that will enable me to to improve you know on for subsequent days and then I, I i really believe in that notion that little things build up so yeah. of course droplets make up the ocean so and that's why i'll keep talking about like for instance the notion of peace we are talking about peace uh, um, global peace environmental peace family peace and all sorts of um, forms of peace Peace starts with an individual. So one of the areas that I really believe that we start, you know, um, in, in bits, um, from bits to a whole or from bits to an exponential uh, capacity is if we think that peace is elusive, a lot of people think that peace is elusive in this world. But when we think of one person as an individual, you as one person, if you can be peaceful, not just within yourself, but if you can practice peace, it spreads from your family that this is just one person, one, let's just take it like a drop, a drop of peace. 
from you to the people in your family, your members, the members of your family, and then the members of your family go out into the community, to the schools, into their workplaces, into, and then they begin to spread because they are starting, you've started from a foundation of peace in the family as a strong social unit. So it begins to spread. It has this exponential value. It just has this, this significant effect you know, in the world. So that's an example of how I consider the power of individual action. That's what I call it, the power of individual action. And that's what I do every day. Every positive thing I do, every idea, not just doing, every positive thoughts of mine, my thoughts, my positive words, and my positive actions, they all add up to making the world a better place. Beautiful. And yes, you're right. Global peace comes in small incremental peace steps, one at a time, over and over and over again. And and they build on each other. It creates a momentum, right? Indeed. <laughs> okay, let's dive in to that second element of the happy formula. And I've observed that major life transformations or discovery of purpose often comes from a devastation. Addictions, disease, death, disaster, some big crisis strips a life to its core. However, in my second book, Turning Inspiration into Action, I shared the transformational process I've used to discover my purpose using inspiration. So how about you, Pemé? Was there a specific moment or event or crisis or inspiration that revealed to you the purpose you were meant to live? <laughs> That's an inspirational question, Matt. Indeed, indeed, indeed. I refer to a particular event, and that's a... a that was when I was um, I was mediating. I served as a mediator <laughs> in a protracted, difficult matter. It was a very difficult matter. And when I success successfully uh, reconciled uh, oh, everyone involved, can can you? I, I read this about you, and I had that in my notes right there. Protracted, difficult situation. Can you explain what that was? Are you at liberty to t take us there to, to understand it? <laughs> okay, protracted because it it was it lasted for a while. It was a situation. It was just a problem among people, and it, it lasted for a while because there were several attempts to 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 make peace among the people involved in that matter, and it took a long time because people made several attempts, but there was no um, no peace, no reconciliation. So that made it protracted, and it was difficult because the attempts the people tried. It was just a difficult situation because sometimes there were there, there were there was cases of recalcitrance. There were just it was just difficult, really difficult. So that's why I called it a protracted, difficult. Matter. Were you related to either of the parties or you were just really a mediator between the two parties? Um, I, I wasn't related to them, um, none of, not related to them, but I had, um, I interacted with them you know, on, on the common ground, um, aside the, the mediation. So I knew all of them and I was, I was, pas I was also involved, I was also involved in the matter. Okay. Yes, I was involved in the matter. So I was one of the parties in the matter. Okay. <laughs> so I was involved. Okay. Yes. So, so when I, I was still, even when the situation was difficult, attempts were difficult, I still continued. I just believed that. And I, pray, I prayed about it. Mm -hmm. I prayed about it. And I believed that that matter was going to be resolved. And so after several attempts and I resolved the issue and brought people together. They, we all gathered together on a particular day. It was on a Saturday. We gathered together and ate. You know, we had we shared the meal together, all the parties involved. And then someone, one person there called me a peacemaker. He mm. called me a peacemaker. He is no longer alive, but he called me a peacemaker mm. because for him to have called me that peacemaker, he saw that I did what was maybe something that was really a, a remarkable thing. And from that day, I know that I've always had that potential to be a peacemaker right from 
um, birth. But when he called me a peacemaker, that really inspired me in my peace work. So it, it was like a boost. Go on, go on, go on. This is your mission. This is your mission on this on earth. So continue your good work, be inspired. So that really inspired me. So that's an event that I always remember and I, I like to refer to. And it shows that peace is possible whatever you do is possible and it also is inspiring for me so that's is an event I'm, i gladly share yeah that's great i was just listening to we did a podcast with a very very interesting very creative very lovely lady called carrie stewart parks and she's an artist and um she's it's episode 78 if you haven't seen it folks go take a listen but she has the same story she discovered her purpose in life really, and her, her real ignition in life, late in life when somebody said she was an inspiration to other women. And she never thought of herself that way. And she thought, well, if that person thinks I'm an inspiration, then I need to live up to this. And I, I need, I'm gonna live my life as an inspiration. And you were labeled the peacemaker. And how did that change how, you, how your life worked from that moment? What was what was the what was the transformation that believing yourself as a peacemaker did to you? What, what was the trans? What did it feel like? Yeah, indeed, it felt like just as I said, like a boost, because I've already uh, peace. I I have already started my peace work on my peace initiatives, um, even before that incident. But after that, after that, it was like a. a it a real it was just a, a, an upliftment and so i just discovered and, and then i just um, discovered that the, there was more energy there was more more power there was more interest in peace work there was more interest in conflict resolution peaceful conflict resolution there was more interest in being a, a mediator helping people to resolve their conflicts and i'm usually the go to person when people want to even in the family or elsewhere when people um, it's just a natural thing it, it just comes naturally that i am usually the person that people want to usually uh, consult to solve their their problems or help them to solve conflicts so that was a boost for me and it was transformational because it i, I believe it also opened um it broadened my frontiers it broadened my frontiers for my mission it broadened my frontiers for peace building for peacemaking for instilling peace in whatever i'm doing or wherever i'm going in my words in my action whatever i'm doing so that event yeah. is <laughs> a memorable one for me yeah. that's beautiful and as a peacemaker, I just wonder if I could ask a personal question. Um, I'm in a conflict with our executive producer at WITV7, trying to get more broadcast time. Do you think you could help me get more broadcast time? <laughs> the conflicts, yes, of, yes, course, yes. of course, of <laughs> course, there are different types of conflicts and it depends on the, there are many ways to address the conflict and it's something that, well, you can always contact me. I'll let you know how to do that. So I'm, I'm, I'm and, and by the way, some yes. conflicts provide opportunities for growth. So some conflicts are constructive while other conflicts are destructive. So this is a conflict that can be resolved it's, peacefully. Uh, yeah, uh, the, it's, <laughs> of course, it's just a joke. We're, we're conflict free here at WITV7. Yeah. Uh, conflict is like strength training. You know, if you use it right, right when you're strength training, you break down the muscle, you're creating conflict inside the body and then healing happens and you get stronger. So you're hundred percent right. Conflict shouldn't be avoided. It should be embraced but embraced as, a, as an opportunity, not as, not as a fight, correct? Correct. Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff, Pime. Uh, so let's take a quick commercial break so I can tell our audience, <coughs> excuse me, tell our audience about a sure-fired and guaranteed way that they can keep every single one of their New Year's resolutions for 2022 and for every year to follow. living here. I love good things made for good people. That's why I love Happy Living's online e-course. It's an eight week long deep dive into you and the inspired life you want to live. The life you were put here on this earth to live. The one that you and only you can live. Eight weeks of lectures and ideas and topics 
and supporting materials and powerful self-improvement tools, all designed for you. All designed to help you create the tools and the power and the confidence you need to discover your purpose and to discover the life you were meant to live and to feel incredibly inspired and motivated to decide you will live your life to its fullest. It's all designed to help you create the unique and distinct philosophy of you and your inspired life. Go to happyliving.com, select our e-course, and save a hundred bucks with promo code WITV7. And for every enrollment, I'll donate another hundred bucks to WITV7. For $300 in about 30 hours, I promise you'll never, ever be the same again. And we're back. And this is the Something Significant Show. And I'm Matt Gersper. Hey, friends. We designed our e-course specifically to help you create the tools you need to make the right resolutions for you and then to bring them into your life to stay. And I'll personally guarantee it. If you'll give us your complete attention for about four hours a week for the next eight weeks, then I'll guarantee that you can bring any resolution you want to life in your life and keep it there as long as it serves you. And if we don't live up to that promise, to my promise, to you, you'll get all your money back, 100% guaranteed. That's my promise to you. But now let's get back to my special guest star, Upeme Okan. Upeme, I love an article called The, the Science Beh Behind the Power of Giving. I found it on livescience.com and it says, <clears throat> that the act of giving itself, the act of giving can be a gateway to discovering your reason for being on this planet. It concludes with compelling scientific data that supports the notion that giving one's time and talents and treasures is a powerful pathway to discovering purpose, transcending difficulties, and finding fulfillment and meaning in life. So I've updated our formula. Capacity, plus purpose, plus giving equals really happy. So what do you think of Peme? From your life experience, have you found that giving your time and talents and treasures has been a pathway for discovering your purpose and transcending difficulties that you've faced and for bringing real meaning into your life? Mm, indeed, that question really, really, really resonates with me. I have found out and I have, I have really, I can really, I can really confirm that giving, 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 giving is a precious, is a precious value and is a precious experience. And I have, I have noted that giving transcends a, a financial we can give in many ways not just mm -hmm. finances you can give your time you can give your energy you can give your resources giving for me personally i prefer to give i give i prefer to give more than i receive because it makes me feel fulfilled when i give when i when i see people happy when I see people happy because of what um, they have received from me whether it's my time whether it's my and whatever it is it makes me happy it makes me feel fulfilled so yes. giving is one value that I really value is <laughs> a value I value yes. and I have noted that and I have come to see <coughs> that you no know, giving it's, 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 it's such, when you say it's blessed to give, I really, really concur that it's really blessed, blessed, blessed to give. And I've noticed that, for instance, things like voluntarism. Yep. Voluntarism is something that a lot of people embrace. And I embrace it wholeheartedly because when you volunteer your time it's it's you you're 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 helping a lot of people you're not getting paid for instance but you're helping in so many ways so giving has a lot of it's just like when you give out you just give out in one in one uh, you just give out in a tranche but the effect we have multitude it has a multiplier effect so i have experienced it i have experienced a lot of situations where i have given 
And for me, it makes me so happy where I've given my time. And I want people to understand that even if you don't have uh, finances to give, giving is such a virtue. You can give your time. You can talk to someone, someone that is distressed. You can pick up the phone. You can make a phone call. You can send a message. You can make a trip. You can go to the hospital, visit the, visit the sick. You can, I mean, there's so many ways to give. And honestly, when you give whatever it is that you have, because we are gifts to the world, let us be gifts to the world. When you give whatever it is that you have, you are doing a great, great, great service to humanity. You're doing a great, great service to the universe. So giving, giving is something that I'll continue to advocate. It's something I have enjoyed and it's something that I, I have I have um, benefited from yeah. because I have benefited from it because it has brought <laughs> me fulfillment and it has brought fulfillment to others. Yeah, that's that's great. And so science confirms it, how you feel. And I agree 100%. I love that feeling that you're describing. It comes from the fourth element of significance, doing work that creates value to others, giving. And I know from my personal life experience that the magic of life comes more, as you pointed out, from not from getting more, but from giving more, right? But there's more to it than that. It's not just the giving that's magical. Anyway, what I've been exploring and learning is that when you're giving from living in your purpose, that's where the real magic lies. So tell us, how does it make you feel when you're giving to others through the work you were put on this planet to do and someone notices and compliments you by calling you a peacemaker, as we talked about how, how much that changed your life, or referring to you as an inventive creator of ideation, <laughs> or by telling you that you're one of God's most beautiful gifts, and you are, or Thank you. <laughs> a reader of your book, The Value Strings writes, I truly believe this is a book we should all have. It's beautifully written, chock full of inspiration and words of wisdom. And another one says, Ukpeme's words are inspiring, moving, and shift you to wanting to live better. And then she fills you with the undeniable knowing that you can live better. What's better than that, Ukpeme? How does all <laughs> that make you feel? All that makes me feel blessed. All that makes me feel so motivated. All that makes me feel happy. All that makes me feel just feel so so to feel fulfilled that I am adding value to the lives of people and to people who are reading my book for instance and and just like you rightly like you mentioned someone has has told me that I am one of God's most beautiful gifts and that is um, that is a statement that I I cherish so much because it, it shows that I am I I am blessed I am not I'm blessed I'm, a, I'm blessed to bless and so uh, I'm happy to be a blessing to other people. And so when we see ourselves, ourselves as gifts to the world, we need to, we need to find out all, we are all blessed with different gifts. We have different gifts, good gifts, talents. How do we use them? How do we use them? So as gifts to the world, I just believe that we should just keep on giving those things that we have. Don't let them, don't hide them inside you. Let them shine. Let them live. Show them, show them, you know, spread them to people. So being a, a beautiful gift to the world um, inspires me. It's such a heartening thing that someone said to me. And, uh, and I continue to um, look forward to continuing to be being a, a gift or being gifts to the world. So those things are, they are part of my fulfillment. You know, they're part of things that make me feel fulfilled. Those are testimonies that not just make me feel fulfilled, but they also inspire me yeah. to continue yep. the good work. Continue becoming <laughs> more so you can continue with me. Yes, and indeed. This is this is how it works, what folks, this is why it's so important to add purpose and giving into your life. If you discover your purpose, it makes the giving easy. So purpose and giving make this great big happy circle. <laughs> giving your time and talents and treasures is a powerful pathway to discovering purpose. And as we've just been discussing, when you're giving from living in your purpose, it brings profound joy into your life. So giving leads to purpose and giving from purpose leads to joy. 
So mm -hmm. to more properly reflect the exponential power of the happy formula, I've got to tweak it just a bit more with Pime. The happy formula is this, capacity times purpose times giving equals happy to the third power. And that's mm -hmm. really, truly, deeply happy. Does that sound about right to you? Oh, it sounds so right. <laughs> it sounds so right, indeed. So I just call it the the, the happiness happiness to the to the high degree and possible higher degree and possible highest degree. <laughs> Love it. And the the key is, folks, not to live your life the way Upeme is or not to live the, the lovely life that I've found and discovered for me. No, it's your own, your own purpose, your own reason, because that's that beautiful gift that Pime is talking about. That is your unique gift. And when you discover it, it's like love. You know, people say, I don't know. I don't know if I've ever been in love. Well, you haven't then. And when you <laughs> discover it, you say, oh my God, whew, that's, that's what love is. And that, that same thing works with your purpose. So if you haven't found it, Please keep looking. So very good stuff, Pime. Let's wrap things up with the lightning round. I'll read a few of my very favorite quotes and then you respond telling us what it means to you. The first thing that comes to your mind, because after all, it's called a lightning round. So here we go. From Helen Keller. I long to accomplish great and noble tasks, but it's my chief duty to accomplish humble tasks as though they were great and noble. Be focused, be determined, and you will achieve. Good. From Albert Einstein, there are two ways to live your, yeah, there are two ways to live your life. One is as though nothing is a miracle. The other is as though everything is a miracle. Be thankful for everything. Imbibe an attitude of gratitude. Beautiful. And that comes from one of the world's most renowned scientists, right? <laughs> Impressive. Yeah. From Voltaire. He says, wherever my travels lead, paradise is where I am. Everywhere. Everywhere. You can make everywhere is. Everywhere is an opportunity for, uh, there's joy everywhere, there's happiness everywhere. So everywhere provides an opportunity for happiness. And so you don't need to <coughs> travel, you don't need to travel miles. You can, happiness is within you and is around you. Yeah, beautiful. From Rumi, he says, I love this. If you put your heart against the earth with me in serving every creature, our beloved will enter you from our sacred realm and we will be, we will be so happy. United in love, united in peace, united in happiness. Beautiful. Last one from Goff. This is our show anchor. It says, Goff says, whatever you can do or dream you can do, begin it. <clears throat> Boldness has genius power and magic in it, begin it now. With God, all things are possible. And with God, you can have, with God, God strengthens us to achieve what we need to achieve and what we want to achieve. Awesome, awesome. Okay, now folks, it's your turn to play along with Upemi and me. If you can hear my voice and you were inspired by today's show, with Upeme Okan, please share some love with our amazing broadcast team by giving what you can to WITV7. They're a 501c3 charity on a mission to educate, empower, and encourage. They do good works with your kindness. Upeme, I love your desire to inspire the world and how you amplify your voice through writing and speaking and singing too. Mm -hmm. You can broadly spread your message of peace and confidence and fairness 
all across our great, big, beautiful planet. And I admire and I agree with your belief that even under the most daunting circumstances, we should face the world with a smile and keep moving forward. Because when we do, we discover there is unexpected help from within and around mm -hmm. and above too. I love that. Indeed. And I'm so, happy, so happy that you've shared your great, big, beautiful spirit on our show today. Would you please take a minute and share any parting remarks you'd like to leave with our audience? Oh, thank you, Matt. I'll share two remarks. One will be one of my quotations from my book, and the other one will be excerpts from my song. So the first one is a quotation from the value string, and it is, one of my quotations is this, even small enclosures emit light. And so to everyone listening, everyone watching, even small, wherever you are, you can emit light. You don't need to be on a stage. You don't need to be in a, in a large place you know, to shine. You don't need to be on a stage. You can, you can make a positive change from your own personal stage, from your space, from your little space where you are. So shine your light from wherever you are. Shine your light from where you are seated. You don't shine your light and your light will shine in the world. So that's the first remark. And the second one is, I'll just sing, <laughs> part of my song also called yeah. The Values String, okay? We all people, let's live our values. Worthy people, let's be our values. All good people, let's teach the values. Beautiful people, keep wearing your values. Thank you. I love it. And folks, just I'll give you a real quick list of the values that Upeme tries to live. And there's a bunch of them. Wisdom, strength, resilience, determination, responsibility, hope dedication, service, prayer, faith, gratefulness, joy, audacity, beauty, composure, contentment, and self-control. You got to get to know that lady, folks. I also want to thank WITV7 for hosting and promoting our show so we can keep interviewing inspiring guests like Upeme and reaching folks just like you ready to create your own extraordinary lives. A special thank you to our sponsors, the philosophy of, <laughs> excuse me, the philosophy of you and your inspired life and happy living. And remember folks, I'll donate a hundred bucks for each and every enrollment using promo code WITV7. So tell all your friends too. go to happyliving.com, select eCourse and enroll together as a group. And especially thank you viewers and listeners. You'll find links to websites and social media and all things Upeme Okan. Find her, friend her, listen to her music, and buy her book called The Value String. It's about transitional life, compelling fulfillment, and profound peace. I think you heard her talk about peace a little bit. And you can also learn about her peace agenda. It's all available at, values, at thevaluesstring.com. That's all one word, thevaluesstring.com. From me to you, dear friends, I love you and I want you to be happy. I want you to be really, truly, deeply happy. And speaking of happy, please go to happyliving.com right now and take our happy quiz. Because when you measure your happy, you'll focus your attention on it. Plus, measuring your happy will inspire change and learning and improvement to come into your life. And speaking of life improvement, I hope Upeme has got you motivated and feeling confident and bold too, ready to improve your life, ready to bring to your life your unique and distinct reason for being on this planet. Because that's how you'll make your mark of significance on the world. And the world needs to hear from you. Till next time, I'm Matt Gersper. You are awesome. And this is the Something Significant Show. And we're out.